The Monkey's Paw, adapted from the story by W. W. Jacobs. Part 1 The night was cold and wet, but the fire burned brightly and the living room of the White's house was comfortable. Mr. White and his son, Hébert, were playing chess. Listen to that wind, said the older man. I don't think he'll come tonight. The words died away from his lips as the gate banged loudly and heavy footsteps came toward the door. Mr. White hurried to the door and returned with a tall, heavy man. Sergeant Major Morris, he said, introducing his guests to Mrs. White and their son. Sergeant Major shook hands, took a chair by the fire and accepted a drink. At the third glass, his eyes got brighter and he began to talk of foreign lands and strange peoples. I would like to go to India myself, said old Mr. White. Just to look around a bit, you know. I would like to see those old temples and fakirs. What was the story about a monkey's paw, Morris? Nothing that is worth hearing, said the soldier. Just a bit of magic. To look at, it's just an ordinary paw. Dried to a mummy. And what is special about it? Asked Mr. White. An old fakir, a very holy man, put a spell on it so that three different people could each have three wishes from it, said Morris. Nobody spoke. Then a bear broke the silence in the room. Did you make the three wishes? He asked the soldier. I did, replied the soldier, and his glass tapped against his teeth. Has anybody else wished? asked the old lady. The first man had his three wishes, yes, was the answer. I don't know what the first two were, but the third was for death. That's how I got the paw. His tone was so serious that no one spoke for a while. Why are you keeping the paw then? asked the old man. It's no good to you anymore, since you have no more wishes. I had some idea of selling it, said the soldier, but I don't think I will. It is responsible for enough trouble already. Besides, people don't want to buy it. Suddenly he threw the paw into the fire. Old Mr. White immediately bent down and picked it up. I threw it on the fire, said Morris. If you keep it, don't hold me responsible for what happens. I won't, said the old man. But tell me, how do you do it? Just hold it in your right hand and wish aloud, said the Sergeant Major. But I'm warning you, it is interfering with fate, and that's not good. Part 2 Mr. White dropped the paw into his pocket, and no more was said about it. Mrs. White served supper, and the family sat and listened to some more stories about India until Morris said goodbye and left. Then Hebert turned to his father. What are you going to wish for? I don't know. It seems to me that I have everything I want. I know you're worried about the 200 pounds you owe on the house, said Hebert. Well then, said the old man, holding up the paw in his right hand, I wish for two hundred pounds. There was a loud noise from the piano, and the old man cried out. His wife and son ran to him. It moved, said the old man. As I made my wish, it twisted out of my hand like a snake. But I don't see two hundred pounds, said Hebert, as he picked up the monkey's paw from the floor. The whites sat down again in front of the fire, but they did not speak and soon went to bed. In the morning, Hebert laughed at their fears. It's all nonsense, he said. Besides, even if you get the 200 pounds, how can they hurt you? After Hebert went to work, Mr. and Mrs. White continued to talk about the monkey's paw, as well as about the sergeant major's other stories and his drinking habits. Suddenly, Mrs. White stopped talking. 
She was watching a stranger moving around outside the house. He seemed to be trying to make up his mind to enter. Mrs. White noticed that the stranger was well-dressed and she immediately thought of the 200 pounds. Finally, the man opened the gate and walked up to the house. Mrs. White opened the door. She brought the stranger into the room and waited patiently for him to speak. I come from Megan's company, he said at last. Is anything the matter? Asked the old lady breathlessly. A bear? What is it? What is it? I'm sorry, began the visitor. Is he hurt? Badly hurt, said the visitor. But he is no longer in any pain. Thank God for that, said the old woman. And then she realized what he meant. She cried out and ran to her husband. He was caught in the machinery, the man said in a low voice. The company asked me to tell you and to express their sympathy. There was no reply. The old woman's face was white and the old man looked sick. The Megan's company is not responsible, the visitor continued. But as your son was a good worker, they want to give you some money. Mr. White rose to his feet. How much? He asked with a look of horror on his face. 200 pounds was the answer. Mrs. White screamed, but the old man did not hear her. He fell senselessly to the floor. Part three. The old people buried their son. It was all over very quickly. The days passed and nothing happened to make their hearts lighter. Sometimes they sat for hours without speaking. They slept badly and often Mrs. White did not get any sleep at all. One night she awoke her husband. The monkey's paw! She cried wildly. Where is it? I just remembered it. Why didn't I think of it before? Why didn't you think of it? Why? What? I don't understand, said Mr. White. The other two wishes. You used only one. Go down and get the paw and wish our boy alive again. The old man did not like the idea, but his wife dragged him to the hallway. He went down to the living room and found the paw but he could only think of the way his son had looked as he lay dead. A cold sweat covered his face. It is foolish and wicked, he said. Wish, said his wife in a strong voice. He raised his hand. I wish my son alive again, he said. The ball fell to the floor. Mr. White dropped weakly into a chair as the old woman went to the window and stood looking out. Nothing happened except the candle burned down. Finally, the old man went to bed and his wife soon followed, but they could not sleep. And so the old man went downstairs to get a candle. When he reached the bottom of the stairs, he suddenly heard a knock at the door. He stood motionless until the knock was repeated. Then he hurried up the stairs to the bedroom and closed the door behind him. The third knock was very loud. Mrs. White sat up in bed. It's Abear, she screamed. It's Abear. I forgot that he was buried two miles away. I must open the door. Don't let it in, cried the old man, trembling. You're afraid of your own son, she cried. I'm going down. There was another knock and another. The old woman hurried downstairs. Her husband called to her, but she did not turn back. Come and help me, she shouted from the hallway. I can't reach the bolt at the top. There was no answer. Her husband was on his hands and knees on the floor, 
He was trying to find the paw. He wanted to find it before the thing that was outside could get in. He heard his wife put a chair near the door. He heard the bolt creak as it moved slowly back. At the same moment, he found the monkey's paw and quickly made his third and last wish. The knocking stopped suddenly. He heard his wife open the door. A loud cry of disappointment gave him the courage to run down and stand at her side. The street lamp shone on a quiet and deserted road.